Welcome to I Love Stocks. Today we're going to create a watch list. Today's lesson is on how to create a watch list and make it as a pro. So we're kind of going to ahead and show you my setup for how I set up in the day when I wake up in the morning. This is I Love Stocks. I usually keep my watch list over here on the left. Each ones that I want to kind of look at, you know, I've I got a bunch of them. I got them in sectors. I've got them in uh, uh, trading patterns, you know, like descending triangles, ascending triangles, bouncing off the VWAP, 52-week uh, lows. You know, I, I, I got a top 20 watch list, and that's what I want to try to talk to you today about, how to create one, and how to, how to, and there's five different ways of hooking up a good watch list. Everybody's got to start off with a good watch list, especially as a beginner. So how to build a good watch list. First rule, first rule is you want to keep it simple and you want to keep it fresh. It means you always want to constantly update it and start off small. You know, keep it simple. Just have a couple ideas of how you want to set up your watch list. I set mine up with the last price. I have the market, you know, indicator right here, a percentage, the net increase and decrease, volume, shares that are being floated, which is not very accurate on Ameritrade. And then I have two custom scans that I set up here just to kind of give me ideas on how they trade. And that goes on up on a, most of my watch lists. Then I have a couple other setups that are a little bit different. Let me see if I can find one. Yeah, I ain't going to worry about it. But uh, creating a watch list. So you want to keep it fresh and simple. You don't want to overdo it. You want to make it easy to where you can go ahead and just click on a ticker and run it to your chart. I have it set up to my charts over here. Move that over just a little bit. So all I got to do is like hit a hit a on my top 20 list. I can just hit like Neo, and I get my chart set up. And I can move this over to a day, and I'm automatically into my charts. You know XPEV. I've been watching. Had a nice little pullback, Baba. So that's kind of how I watch my stocks. The second rule, start off big and then go small. Start off with a big old watch list and then start weeding them out. Start finding the ones that are constantly runners and constantly have good uh, volume and that are relevant to your list. And what I mean by re relevancy, I mean by being in the now, knowing the ones that are the volume leaders, as I can show you right here, you know, I can hit that and I can go right on top to my volume leaders. So I know my top 10 million uh, ones that are really flying and I can go to my, my percentage losers and I can go to my percentage gainers. So that's how I kind of work my watch list. I look at the volume, then I look at the price and that determines a lot of how I play, how I trade my top 20 watch list. And number three, you always want to try to play your favorites. The favorites, as I mean favorites, as I mean what sectors are running, what ones are keeping the volume going, uh, which ones are constantly getting good news, which one do you think are 52-week lows that you want to add to your watch list that you think are ready to turn around. You know, I have five reasons why I want to get to a trade, into a trade, and I put that five reasons into my prepared watch list. I have five reasons what will get me into a trade, and if I hit four to five of them criterias, I'm in the trade. And if I match it on my watch list, and I look at, at support, because I like to buy at support and sell at resistance, that works very well for me. I get in and out of trades once I hit a good profit. I don't look back, because I know they will pull back, a rhyme and a poem. So, you know, f um, Always remember, play your favorites. Add them to that watch list. You know, find what you want. How do you trade? Do you trade uh, with patterns? Do you trade um, strategies? Do you trade after hours? Do you trade swing? Do you day trade? Do you scalp? Set that watch list to the criteria on how you want to trade. I admire every trader out there. I look at every trader and I define, you know, are you conceited on how you trade? Are you a smart ass? Or are you willing to share your ideas? Are you biased? Um, I look at 
people like that that give me alerts. I, you know, I take alerts off people and I, I, I study them and I analyze them. And I say, okay, I'll add this to my watch list. I like it. You know, spy, I always keep the spy on my watch list. So there's other ways of getting alerts for your watch list, usually through ideas of friends, through scanners, through news, through, uh, you know, fat cats up on Wall Street. To even some of the poorest traders out there, I'll look up their stock and try to figure out <clears throat> what's best. So, number five, find out what you want, how you want to trade, you know, what fits best for your leisure time. Can you do? You, do you only like to trade the 52-week lows? Do you only like to trade the 52-week highs that break out of resistance? Do you like to p trade the pivot points? Do you like to trade the volume? You like to trade the news so keep that in mind well how do you want to trade what fits your your style of trading are you a pre-market trader do you play the gap down do you play the gap ups do you short a stock once they break out there's a market is set up to wait you can trade it any way you want now another and the most important rule to me to keep in a real good watch list is being in the now being knowing what sectors are running, feeling the vibe of other traders, going off your own instincts. You know, I constantly talk about how I feel and how I want to trade. You know, if I, I talk about the three-day runs, I talk about the five-day pullbacks, I talk, I have a ton of strategies that I can use. So I want to be in the now. I want to know what sectors are running. I want to know what sectors are hot. You know, we got the EV car sector hot now. We did have the bio sector that was hot. We are going to have a vaccine soon. That'll trade the momentum of the market. We've been playing on volatility. We had a great V recovery. I think we'll have a breakout on that V next year. I'm very bullish on the auto industry. Uh, being in the now, you know, a, a contested election. What will Biden presidency do to Wall Street? They like to spend money. The market's uh, a little biased sometimes on politics, and the algorithms will run your trade. So you got to think of them algorithms. How are they going to run off the news? You know, uh, remember when the COVID cases at the beginning were just kept increasing and increasing? We just kept crashing and crashing and crashing. And an impeachment trial that was unnecessary caused a little volatility in the market. Maybe uh, uh, a confrontation in the Middle East could pull the market back a little bit and then rebounds. There's just being in the now. You got to know when you wake up in the morning, and you got to also uh, have high spirits, be happy, you know, enjoy. I I don't trade good if I'm not happy. Period. If I'm not happy, I don't trade good, and and I have rules that I go by. You know, if I'm um, doing three great days, I mean I'm up like ten or twelve grand or five grand, and I'm just having three good days where I'm not missing a boat, not missing a hit. I want to take a break and I want to slack off a little bit. And I'm going to go back and refresh my watch list and take time off a little bit and just kind of do some homework and then try to find them supports on them pullbacks. Because I'm, you know, feeling, being in the now, I'm feeling that resistance in the market. You know, I'm not the kind of guy that thinks the stock's going to keep running and running and running. I look at them for the pullbacks every day. And I like to play the pullbacks. I like to play off support and sell at resistance. And that's been working well for me. So always remember, keep you a good watch list. Keep them in sectors. Different sectors run at different times. I got my EV sector up here. I've got the percentage loser scan up here. I can change this scan to like, um, and there's a lot of stocks in here that I've been watching on the percentage losers. You know, like D-Dog. I caught a beautiful breakout on D-Dog, and she's pulled back here again. Made $300 a contract on it. Let's go to the 20 day, just have a look at it. So we pulled back to a support level here that I had. I called it down here at the bottom. I said, this thing getting ready to reverse. And it hit my resistance level that I had right here at 89.48 and stopped and pulled back. So this thing could start creating a higher low. There's a play. That's a position that I might want to take next week. Nile. 
played it last week. Had that nice run all the way up. I started feeling itchy. Started feeling a little bit of hesitation. Here, I bought me a put. I had a call all the way up. So I decided to buy a put. It did pull back a little bit here, and I thought I was up pretty good. Then bam, after hours she broke. But, but, this is what happened the next day. Had the huge sell-off. I got lucky. You know, I was starting to get that, that anxiety, like I got into the wrong trade. But then, and I felt like it was overextended. Centron came out, and lucky for me, it pulled back. And I made, you know, instead of 40 bucks, I made 600 on that trade. I got out too soon. I should have held it to my support level that I called in the room, but I didn't. I got out at 46.33. But that's just one, one trade. And then it was one that you could scalp all day long and play that bearish pattern because people were stuck in the trade. People were stuck in this trade, and when they got to their office, I mean, they're down big time. So they're going to buy back into the trade and try to average out. That's what you're seeing with this move right here. People took the dip and averaged out and tried to get out even, and they did the same thing here. They just kept buying the dip, and then we had this dip down here, and she finally settled in that first support channel at the end of the day. So, you know, watch lists are great to have. And that's just one of my watch percentage losers. I could look well, with the Meritrade. They also have what you call the percentage gainers. I could be watching some of these runners that are running and playing the pullbacks off them instead of the reversals. Then I had that big breakout. Bam, pulled back to support previous high. There was two plays you could have made on that trade. And I'm using this watch list. I'm noticed, wow, the volume is very high on this CBAT. Nice breakout. Good pullback to the mid-channel of support. Breaking on out again. F-cell. Let's look at the 20-day. Gives me ideas on how I want to trade it. Been on a real nice run. We got a wedge. This thing can pull back to the bottom of this wedge. Let's just say it's right in here, you know. Or it could be right in here. But that's a pretty good little wedge right there. This thing can pull back to these lower support levels and bounce on up, create a higher move. That's how I'd look at F-Cell as a trade. You know, I can go to my top EV car watch list and see what volume leaders have been running that day. I can see which ones have pulled back the most and which ones have have the pull run up the highest. You know, I can do the same thing with my top 20 watch list. And this is what this is all about, is the top 20 watch list. Keeping it, sell, keeping it fresh and simple keeping your top 20 tickers in there that you've been watching for a, for forever, keeping it fresh and keeping it simple. Like, you know, um, I'll keep these in here. And if they start to show low volume, I might look at them and analyze them and say, okay, we're down at the bottom. I think momentum in the news has been pathetic. I'm going to take it off my watch list and add a new one that I've been watching here this week. Now, every week I add two or three, and I subtract two or three to this watch list. And every week... I can play off this watch list for like example we had a pullback here on XPEV XPEV pulled back to my previous high that I had right here at support level at 3951 bounced right off that area and ran on up here to about 42 43 dollars 42 something pulled back so it's creating a little channel right here I'm gonna watch this support level and I can go like Baba Baba I've been doing pretty good here we are with a double bottom there's an idea to play. I just took me two seconds to watch that and say, I want to run this up to the 50 and see if I can break that 50 and run it up to this next, break this resistance level right here at 271.87. You know, I can turn this around. I can go to the percentage highs and I can look at Jamia. Jamia, I called at the bottom. We hit my slow support of 1194. She's on her way up. We got to break this resistance. We can move on up if we break this resistance we got three other resistances that we can climb to. I have a $20 target on Jamia on a reversal play. Setting up for a double top breakout. And that's a hard resistance. If we get past that hard resistance, we'll go up to the 200 here at 1620 something. So I'm using this watch list constantly. I'm looking at the losers and the winners, and I'm looking at the volume leaders that day. Looking at it, what they do in the morning, if some of these on this watch list are, are breaking out on volume pre-market, it gives me an idea. I need to keep it on watch. 
So have preparing a watch list and going over the five rules. And let me go over the five rules one more time. We'll just kind of put it all into perspective. You want to keep it, you want to keep it simple, and you want to keep it fresh. You don't want to get your blood pressure up like I have. You want to keep it simple, and you want to keep it fresh. Uh, start off big, and then thin it out. Find the tickers that ain't working. Throw them to the side. If they start to pop up later on good news or something, add it back to your watch list. If there's a sector that's really running, add some of them tickers to your watch list. The top runners, you know, the volume leaders, uh, the ones that have the best news, the ones that fit your criteria of getting into a trade, add that to your watch list. You want to get into stocks that fit your criteria that match into your watch list. And it's very important to have this watch list. And, just, and you realize after you start using one real well, how much successful you'll become as a trader. So start off big, thin it out, make it small. You know, play your favorites. Again, add your favorites to your watch list, ones that have never done you wrong. And you can play them over and over. And I know people that just play three tickers a year. And they just watch three tickers a year. I have a three ticker watch list. You know, and I know people that have five. I know, you know, 20. I have probably 100 top 20 watch list that I go off of I mean I've traded over I probably charted over a million charts in the 16 years that I've traded so I'm able to watch the trends and find them supports real fast and that's what I like about a watch list CGC you know here we are setting up an ascending triangle are we ready for another breakout or can it pull back to support level and keep that trend going maybe reach up to a double top there's an idea five seconds Amazon. I look at Amazon. I'm going to look at it right now. We got a, a bear, I've got a bearish pattern. It pulled back, created a flag. So this thing could pull back to support level here at 30, 32.94, or it could break resistance here in my resistance channel at 31.68.63. Okay, I've watched this stock for over a year, for many years. I know how it trades. Look at the trend. Even from down here, it's still following trend pretty well. Got a pretty good little flag right there if you want to you know build it on out so i'm always watching out i knew within five seconds how i want to trade this trade netflix i'm going to tell you in five seconds exactly how i want to trade it i'm in my channel point i've got a support level i've got the chart already made up i've got the low support figured out if i want to get in down here at 468 i want to try to break resistance at 494 right now i'm under the pivot point so it's trying to make up its mind if it wants to break that's how I look at that trade. Cody, I'm very called this out at the bottom down here, right around this area, right in here at 317. Here we are at 479. Still bullish, still got an upper wedge. I think we can go up higher. I think we can hit 505 this week easily. You know, Microsoft earnings play came out, pulled back, then had that beautiful run, pulled back to the pivot point, had a little small breakout. I'm not sure about it. I like to see it pull back a little bit. That's how I look at these things. It takes five, ten seconds to figure out if I want to be in the trade. Here's Facebook. We got a flag pattern. We had a nice little pullback. She's consolidating in a channel. It could go either way. We want to break 278.85 and we'll go up higher. If it doesn't break, we're still under that 200. We're squeezing. We got the 50 curling up. We could have a breakout. This is using my SM, my uh, SMA chart. And I have the EMA chart, too, that I use a lot of times, but you know, it just depends. AMAT, I called down here at the bottom, right down here, and I called it up to go to about 63. Wow, I had a nice little breakout on that stock. I didn't see that coming. I was expecting another pullback, had the breakout, so i got to try to figure out how I want to trade this stock. You know, I'm seeing another flag right here. It's a nice little pennant flag for a breakout. It could pull back to this lower support and bounce on back up to here. So that's how I'm looking at this trade. A bullish flag for a higher breakout, pull back to support third time, and then break out that resistance to a triple top. That's how I'm looking at AMAT. So I go through my scan, go through my watch list pretty fast and figure out, you know, okay. So that's how I want to play it. And I've got my five or six trades a day, and I can do this every day off this one watch list. All I got to do is pull up the volume high 
pull up the percentage low highs in the red and in the green and I get some kind of idea of what stocks I want to run what stocks I want to play so prepare a good watch list you know the basic five rules I'll run over one more time that I use to keep it simple and keep it fresh start off big thin it out small play your favorites add your favorites find out how you trade and what you want what kind of hours you want to put in what sectors you like I mean if you're just a sports guy then just create a watch list of sports things that you follow all the time if you're into cars prepare a good car watch list if you have a certain hobby try to find hobby if you you know like clothing prepare a clothing play them bottoms stay in the now is the most important one you got to know you got to know how the market's trending you got to know if the if, if the stock's trending so that's it for preparing a watch list i hope everybody enjoyed always remember you know a good watch list will make you a better trader and just try, don't try to overdo it try to keep it fresh and try to keep it simple and clean and you'll become a lot better trader also remember to hit that twitter bird hit that follow button that'd be great we post alerts in here all the time i appreciate that and also we have on our watch on our uh, website we have our stock twits accounts you can hit them buttons pinterest your youtube channel and we also have a store where you can buy a little bit of merchandise always remember i love stocks <laughs>